by now I'm sure that most of you guys have heard about the train derailment, another train derailment by Norfolk Southern, again in Ohio, this time in Springfield, that sent 28 cars sliding diagonally across the tracks. Apparently no one was injured, but for a time they were actually um, under a shelter in place order because they weren't certain what was on these this train. Um, and we already know about the large train derailment that happened in East Palestine that um, was nearly a month ago now, um, in which we in, that impacted 4,700 people. All those you know people within a mile's radius were forced out. We've had all this toxic um, chemicals that have gone out into the air. All these dioxins. Nobody knows for certain what's going to happen to the soil, um, to the river. Um, a lot of this had spilled into the Ohio River, and we don't know the larger implications of this. Um, and I don't think that we will anytime soon. And we've seen the massive cover-ups regarding this. But what I wanted to talk about today, guys, is the fact that this stuff continues to take place. The fact that this stuff is not um, decelerating; it's accelerating. And I also wanted to touch on the fact that Erin Brockovich is there now. Um, there was a report that came out stating that she was labeled a potential um, extremist by the DHS. So that's something else that I want to hit um, highlight today. And then also the talks and you know further cover-ups. What we can, what we know about these um, these issues with these train cars, the length of these trains. And the fact that they were aware of this, they've been aware of this, they know it's a problem and they've done nothing, um, nothing about it. They even did an investigation um, some through this um, agency that I'm going to be sharing with you in a moment. I'm gonna be linking all this for you guys in the description box below per usual. I'm just gonna hit the highlights. I think it's important that we, that we touch on that. So this particular train, this last train that just derailed in Springfield was 212 cars in length, which is about 14,484 feet in length or 2.74 miles, nearly three miles long. And then the train that derailed in East Palestine um, was 150 cars in length, which is approximately 1.94 miles long, nearly two miles long. Because I think that it's important that we pay attention to how long these um, these cars are because they are just too long. They're not manageable. So there was a this U.S. Government Accountability Office, guys, this GAO had issued a report back on May 30th of 2019 saying that freight trains are getting longer and additional information is needed to assess their impact. So they sort of partnered with the Federal Railroad Administration to study these potential safety risks and the best way to operate these longer trains. Obviously, guys, out of this report, they did nothing with this information, but I did want to hit the highlights of what they found because I think it's important. I think it applies to what we are seeing here. Um, they're talking about how they're nearly three miles long in some cases. Um, talking about the fact that it could block these intersections, um, creating a long, longer time for emergency responders to get to where they need to go, how pe pedestrians are you know, exemplifying unsafe behaviors like we see here where these kids are just kind of crossing through here because they're tired of waiting on this train, all these kinds of things. Um, and they had encouraged the FRA to broadly share their research results. Well, as far as I know, they never did broadly share their research results. And, you know, nothing was done. You know, it was supposed to go with these state and local officials to resolve these issues and nothing has changed. But um, I thought it was interesting that this had been done such a long time ago. So we're going to go ahead and hit the highlights of what they found. It says freight train length has increased in recent years, according to all seven class ra freight railroads. Data on train length are not publicly available. So this isn't something that they made public. However, data provided to GAO by two class one railroads indicated that their average train length has increased by about 25% since 2008 with average lengths of 1.2 and 1.4 miles in 2017. Well, obviously those average lengths have probably increased even again um, because we're seeing these other trains that are two and nearly three miles long. Um, and that doesn't seem to be um, as far as Norfolk is concerned an issue, but it is an issue and it's something that we should be concerned about. Um, so they actually touched on to um, this this major train derailment that had happened in, I believe it was in Pennsylvania. In 2017, a freight train over two miles long consisting of 178 rail cars of mixed freight, including flammable and hazardous liquid, derailed in Hinman, Pennsylvania, causing significant damage. So they knew about this. Um, this was an issue even in 2017. And from that, it spurred them, you know, beginning to dig into this. But what has been done 
with that information? Obviously not much, right? So we're gonna um, talk about a few things in here. So there is a difference between these, um, these, these trains that are mixed, right? And then these unit trains. So a unit train are trains that are carrying a single commodity. So they're carrying only coal or they're carrying only oil and you know they're going to one destination. So they're gonna be easier for these in-train forces to be regulated because they're gonna have about the same length in cars, the same weight. And so this, this generally uniform um, train cars are gonna be easier to manage. In comparison, they say determining train makeup is more complex and mixed freight trains, which can experience more unpredictable in-train forces resulting from rail cars with these differing weights, length, and freight. So they're talking about a mixture. So you could have, you know, your grain in there, your coal in there, um, um, automobiles, and even these hazardous materials, which we have witnessed, right? So they say if it's assembled in a manner in which empty rail cars are in there as well and alternated with these loads, that can cause the buckling effect. So I don't know whether or not there was any empty rail cars in the train in East Palestine, or if there were any involved in this latest accident in Springfield, but that is something to keep in mind. They say that freight trains in the United States utilize these air braking systems to control speed and stop. A conventional air braking system is controlled by an air pressure signal from the leading locomotive, which sends this back to the train um, to engage the brakes. And because each rail car receives a signal sequentially, it takes multiple seconds for rail cars at the end of the train to receive that signal. So what they're talking about is the longer the train is, the longer it's going to take for that air brake to work on those cars in the back. And that's something um, that they've, they've known about. They know this, right? And it just it's only common sense. So the other little thing that I wanted to touch on, if I can get to it, is that says the NTSB railroad employee unions and other stakeholders, um, longer mixed freight trains may be more difficult to handle than unit trains in certain circumstances due to variations in their car length and weight and the extent to which additional DP locomotives are employed. So all these different entities, all these different organizations are aware of the fact that they're more challenging. Um, and so therefore that just leads to more credence to the fact that they should not be having them over a certain length because they are more difficult to manage. Um, and delayed emergency response. This is the other one that I felt was very important to talk about. They say, according to national, state, and local officials that they've interviewed, longer trains pose concerns about the potential for emergency response delays if responders encounter a train blocking one or more crossings and cannot quickly find an alternate route. There was an example in there, again, in Ohio, of officials in Mount Victory, Ohio, reporting that 22 freight trains travel through their town daily, 22 a day, guys, including one that's 16,000 feet in length, which is nearly three miles long. And this train blocks four to five of their grade crossings concurrently. So at the same time, four to five of their grade crossings in their little town are blocked by this train. So that would vastly limit somebody needing to get through in an emergency situation. Um, there was also another example in here of a situation in Texas where they weren't able to respond to a fire quickly. So that's another thing. If you had your home going up in smokes, you may not be able to get firefighters there in time because this very long train is blocking all of the, um, the ways to get to your home. So this is something to be concerned about. This is something they know about. Um, and it says in other examples, local officials from Ohio and Illinois told us they have contacted class one railroads and FRA to find solutions when these idle trains lead to block crossings, especially when emergency access is a concern, but continue to face challenges. Um, class one railroads and FRA officials say they work with local communities to find solutions. I don't think they are working with them guys to find solutions because they don't have an incentive to work with them to find solutions. All they care about is their bottom line and making sure that their cargo gets from point A to point B, and they don't care about who they impact along the way. And I think that is very clear in light of the recent derailment. Um, and it's very clear in light of this information that was leaked from the Guardian talking about the fact that they are not performing the maintenance that they should be performing. So what came out of this study essentially was just these recommendations by the GAO stating that the FRA should develop a strategy to share their research results with both internal and external stakeholders. 
Did they? I don't think so. Um, and that they should work with the railroads to engage state and local governments to identify these community specific impacts of train operations, including longer trains that are blocking these rights of way. But, you know, recommendations are just that they're recommendations. They're not laws. There should be laws on the books that are limiting the length of these trains, even though it's going to cost them more money. It is going to help the general public and it's going to keep um, situations from, like this from happening in the future. Future. And they also need to have their feet held to the fire as far as making the appropriate, um, you know, repairs to their their trains. This is their responsibility, and somebody needs to hold them accountable. And it looks like this agency here, this U.S. Government Accountability Office, isn't going to be one to really hold them accountable, um, as is in their title. We have a lot of these different agencies that our taxpaying dollars are going towards, and they're being used against us rather than for us. I don't see how this is helping, you know, the people. And I wanted to touch on, you know, Aaron Brockovich going to East Palestine and the fact that there was information coming out that she could be a potential special interest um, T word um, as according to DHS. So this um, it says on February 24th distributed to law enforcement agencies by the DHS, the Ohio statewide um, terror analysis and crime center um, T analysis unit situational awareness report obtained by Yahoo News assesses a special interest E groups will continue to call for changes in government governmental policy, which may lead to these protests in and around this area um, and in state and in the state house in Columbus. You guys, this is insane to even think about that, that somebody who's just going in there to try to educate people, to arm them with information so that they don't get hosed over in the process, so that they have, you know, they know what their rights are, they have access to the money that they're going to need going forward. They're not completely, you know, shut out in the dark. I mean, a lot of these people can't even go back into their homes because they don't feel comfortable with that. So they're just supposed to walk away from everything they know, potentially jobs, everything else that could be um, in that area and have to start completely over. They should be, you know, this this company, this Norfolk Southern should be held accountable. They should have to pay out an adequate amount of money to these people that they have potentially given cancer to, have damaged the environment. Where Where is the EPA? Where are the environmental groups that are concerned about this? Instead, now we're going to be labeling the people that are going in there to actually help, to help educate, to help make sure that they get what they need. We're going to label them potential E-words. This is a huge concern because all this does is solidify what we have already been sharing over and over on all of these um, all of the channels in the prepping community about how the government is not working for the people. They are working against the people and they are going after the good people, the people that are trying to do the right thing, that are trying to take care of the environment, that they say that they want to protect and help, right, with all of their green energy deals and initiatives. And they, they're the ones that are helping destroy it, right? And then they don't want us helping anyone and helping them to be prepared. So I think this is important. I'm not going to go into this whole article. I've already gone long enough, but we need to be aware of these things. I'm going to link all this stuff for you guys. I want to hear what your thoughts are down below. Please let me know what you guys think. I think there could be a lot more here than we're even aware of. And they're really concerned about her coming to town because she's very good at investigating. And if there is any complicity with um, our government in this situation, she's going to end up exposing it. I think there's a lot more here. I think there could be a reason why you know they want a lot of these people out of this area. There could be resources there that they're after, whatever it is, but something else is going on here, especially in Ohio with all these derailments one after another. Um, and I think they're concerned about people like her showing up, trying to champion um, the people's rights and take care of all these people in this area. If you guys have enjoyed this video today, please give me a like, share, and subscribe. Remember to pray, prep, and put God first. God bless.